Gobble, 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 gobble. Happy Thursday. Today's Thursday with a TH. Th th Thursday. So I wore my turkey hat for th Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was so long ago. Do you remember Thanksgiving? I put some photos behind me. Look at how much fun we had on Thanksgiving. That's the holiday when we get to eat so much food. We have a big feast. So I put it behind us so we can remember how much fun we had in school back in November. And for our new friends that just joined us, we'll have Thanksgiving next November, right? When we do the holidays in the months of the year, we know January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November is Thanksgiving, December, Happy New Year. Right now it's April. We have a little ways to go to get to November. But come November, we can have Thanksgiving, our Thanksgiving Day feast. You can have some turkey or some vegetarian turkey. You can have cranberry sauce and corn muffins and popcorn and apple pie. Wasn't there a song about that? The turkey ran away before Thanksgiving Day. They said they'd make a roast out of me if I should stay. Bye-bye. We did all those different ingredients for our meal, for our feast. So I'm going to put my Mr. Turkey hat away. Maybe I'll put him in the refrigerator, right? Isn't that where we put turkey? I don't know. I don't know. You have a great, great day. It's a Thursday, and I'll see you later on Friday with another little hat. All right, let's go do some work. All right, come along. Let's go have some fun. Gobble, gobble. Hey there, it's Mr. Lauren, and are you ready to cook up some fun outdoors today? All right, so what I did was it's a little rainy outside. The rain's coming down, a little messy, which is okay. But right now, I don't want to play in the rain. I want to play with nature in some place that's dry. So I'm going to make an outdoor kitchen an outdoor kitchen just for playing with nature, all right? It's gonna look a little bit like the kitchen in your home, but here are some ideas you can try at home. It's for your grown-ups and you, all right? So check with your grown-ups, see what materials you have. All you're gonna need are the following things that I'm gonna show you in the video. But here's my garage, because that's where I'm starting since it's a little rainy outside and my toys are right over there on the floor. Ew, it's really gross in my garage, right? It's a disaster, it's a mess. Snow blowers and shovels. But here are my toys, so I'm gonna show you what I'm doing in my garage. All right, you ready for some fun? Me too. Let's see what we're gonna do. All right, so welcome to my garage kitchen. You know, I'd normally I'd be outside where it's nice, but it's just starting to rain a little bit, and I'm not a kid, so I wanna be inside. But I just wanted to give you some ideas of all the stuff that I put out. And right now you're looking at your home center. So in a classroom, you'd have your kitchen, your dramatic play area. There'd be all kinds of fun things for kids to use. Nice, safe toys that are all kid friendly. They're not gonna get hurt. But at home, you can have fun. You can get hurt. You can use tongs. You can use sticks. You can use forks, all kinds of stuff. And you know, you're there hanging out and playing with them. So. When I say getting hurt, I'm just kind of kidding around. But, so I set up this little area here and uh, let's kind of look at some of these different toys because once outside, the kids' playground is right there. Their imaginations will take them places that you didn't know they could travel to and they'll bring you with them. So this was an activity we did. We collected some nature. We put them inside this egg carton. So here's an egg carton, all repurposed materials. And inside here's all the nature that we found from my yard, like a sprig of spruce, pine tree, a stone, there's leaves, there's some ivy in there that's not poisonous, and some flowers, here's some moss. So kids love to go outside, they love to explore. And if you give them a container and say, hey, can you go collect me some nature? They'll go collect your nature. They'll put stuff in here and they'll use it. So what I like to do is I like to set up a kitchen. And I know there's a lot of kids out there that like to do their own cooking. So they might cook with soil and water, dirt and water. They might make their mud soup or mud coffee or mud cake. They might add leaves or grass. So that's the whole gist of it. We're going to use nature and we're going to use it in a way that we can build some learning skills. So. In here, there's a lot of skills that we can work on with kids. We can work on self-feeding because we're working with forks 
We can work with spoons or sporks. If you uh, entrust your child with a plastic knife, you can use a plastic knife, because why not? Let them cut, let them fool around with it, let them play with the tools so that they can become more efficient with them, and then they become more successful when they see them in the real environment. So there's always forks, there's spoons, here's some chopsticks, I, uh, some little tongue depressors, some popsicle sticks are always fun for mixing and stirring. So the whole idea is we're creating a kitchen. I made a little countertop here just with an old Tupperware. Then you can flip it over, put all your toys back in it. If you want, drill some holes in here. So when you flip it, all the moisture will, will um, come out. You can, um, I throw some old socks in here as rags. That's just to wipe hands. You don't need to have a wet wipe or water with every single little piece of dirt on your finger. Kids are building up a tolerance for getting dirty. If you get muddy, that's okay, it washes off. So here's a little old shoe rag you can clean yourself with. So towels, you could get a towel, make a nice tablecloth, set the table with different plates. Use your nature here. You can have a menu, maybe with a piece of scrap paper or cardboard. You can write down the different items on the menu, or if your child's already drawing a little bit, they can draw an item. They can make up their own menu, so when you come visit them at their restaurant, they can serve you just like they would in a real restaurant. So I'm gonna put some ingredients on the side. You can tie in all sorts of things. They can prep the food, they can work on their scissor skills, right? They can put their thumb in the little hole, fingers in the big hole, and they can keep their thumb up, their elbow in, and they're doing their scissor cutting. Open, shut them open, shut them. They can practice cutting all the ingredients and prepping them, right, for the, for the meal so they can practice cutting. Why not? Sometimes I like sending kids out with scissors at recess to go cut the grass. So meanwhile, we're using a lawnmower, but they get to go out there and they can cut grass. Not a big deal, right? It's a great way to practice their scissor skills. So you can look at the Scissor Skills 101 video that I have up on Look, Look, Learn. That's a great activity for kids to practice with. You can work on some of their tong skills. All the occupational therapists will be happy when they can start pinching, right? They're using their coordination to pinch and pick items up at the restaurant. You can change the items up, so sometimes it's a rock. It might be a little harder to get. They can take those ingredients and they can put them in their bowl, right, to make their soup. Maybe they're gonna make a rock soup. Delicious, and they need to add some vegetables. And what else would go in rock soup? Ooh, how about some dried leaves might go in there. And then, of course, you'll need some water. So one of the key essential ingredients for all your outdoor play is water. So get a nice big bucket of water, leave it out for them. They can scoop the water and add it to the soup. Then they can use an old spoon. Don't go to your kitchen cabinet to get them a kitchen drawer. Get an old spoon, and then you can designate this as the outdoor spoon that goes in your bucket. So here you are mixing and stirring. Careful, it's hot, right? We're pretending it's all pretend play. There's some old measuring spoons here kids can work on, and you're also working on their skills, such as big, or is it a little scoop? Is it a little scoop? So different size comparisons. I love getting a bag of sand, like playground sand, and just leaving it out with a bucket of water and kids can go and they can scoop their sand, they can put it in on a rainy day. I have cardboard set up right here so they can just work on the cardboard and then it's much easier to clean up. If you're in the garage, you can just sweep it right out into the driveway. If you don't have the luxury of a garage or a driveway, outside on a deck, on a balcony, or if you have to, even on the kitchen floor, just a smaller area. And maybe you won't be using dirt in nature. Maybe you're using some rice and dry pasta, and you can still add some water. I know it'll get a little mushy, but that's okay because kids love getting messy. Here's an old style mixer. This one's broken, but you can still find them where they spin, right? The kids can turn the crank. Great for building up those fine motor skills. And I have an old pan here. It's an old popover pan, right? We have tons of muffin tins in our homes that we don't use or they're all dirty. So we are a society that likes to throw things away. Well, I like to keep things. So you can use these to put different ingredients in or they can make their cupcakes. So all kinds of things like that. Here is ooh, a funnel. They make so many different size funnels. Great for pouring ingredients like rocks, like gravel, like dirt outside. Again, you'll designate it as an outside activity. Here's some little muffin papers, of course. Kids love cupcakes, so you can practice. I wonder where this will fit. 
Will it fit inside? Ah, it will. How about in the muffin tin? Will it fit inside? It will. It's a little small, but that's okay. We're pretending. And then, oh, you have some food to go. All right, I've got to go to work. Can I have some food to go? Sure. The child can scoop some food for you and scoop. And then you can even work on putting a lid on if you want. Right? These are some skills to have. Just lining things up. You're talking about shapes. I want the rectangle container. Or do you want the circle container? Oh, here's some other containers. Look, an old ice cube tray or a little tray that was used for some shumai, frozen shumai. So it has all different compartments. How many compartments are there? One, two, three, four, five. You're working on counting skills. Are there more compartments in this ice cube tray or more in this tray? Hmm. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five rows. And how many columns? One, two, three, four. There's four columns. You can count up your columns and rows. Rows, these are all the pre-math skills that they're going to use in kindergarten, first, second grade, right? They're going to start working on diagonal. You could play a game, right? You could make a kitchen game. You could add noodles. You be the, um, the pasta noodles that are the ziti, and I'll be the rigatoni, or I'll be the pinwheels. You could play a game. So all kinds of kitchen games you can use. Toothpicks, right? They're a little sharp. You know your kids, but maybe they can use them for putting inside. Maybe they are the birthday candles when they make some dirt mud birthday cake, right? And they can pretend to light them with a pretend fire. Careful, it's hot. When the flame comes on, you have it in your cake. So you can have all kinds of fun with that. Here's the medicine cups. These things come, right? We have so many of them all lined up. They're stacked in our drawers. So these are great for measuring and scooping. You can line a whole bunch up. You could even add some food coloring to change the colors. Make your potions like a friend of mine, Max, where you can mix the colors together and make your potions. I love using old Play-Doh containers too. Look at these. You can talk about different sizes, right? One is large, one is medium, and one is small. Now we can even tie it into a story like Goldilocks, right? Here's Baby Bear's porridge. Here's Mama Bear. Here's Papa Bear. You can even ask your customers, what would you like? Would you like the big container? Would you like the medium container? What color would you like? They can add different food to it inside. Maybe they need to make a stove. Oh, look, you can get some old wood. All of a sudden, now you have a stove. And you can turn it on. It's really hot. It's really hot. I can even tie in letters with some blocks if I want. I can talk about cubes. Right, we're talking about shapes or cylinders. Sure, we can add some spheres, we can add some circles. So look, here's the letter T. This one is going to be t -t -t tomato soup. Ooh, what other words, food words start with the letter T? T, -t, -t tomatoes, tomato soup. What else? Hmm, you'll have to think about some more, some more words. Oh, here's some more letters. Ooh, it's very hot, and I'm so hungry. So you can use your cubes to tie in. I have an old turkey baster here, right? Great for putting in. Squeeze, let go. The water goes up like an elevator and then bring it over and you can fill up your containers, right? You're working on coordinating a child's body parts to work. I love it when kids are working on learning a new skill with their hands, like cutting with a scissor, because what happens is their mouth always goes open, shut, open, shut, when they're learning how to work on scissors. They're so cute when they're doing that. Sometimes the food's so hot, so we might need a pot holder, right? You can get a pot holder. Kids can work on holding something in the pot holder and moving it around. A little tricky. Or the pot holders that you can put on your hand, you can slide it on and grabbing. That's really tricky, but that's a lot of fun. Sometimes I like to just put a ruler out. Not, I'm not expecting a child to know how to measure things, but it's a great way to introduce skills such as length, numbers, they're all right here naturally, and rulers are things that we see in our environment. Maybe you don't see a wooden ruler as much, but did you ever open up a document on your computer? Right at the top, sometimes there's the margins, so kids are seeing numbers, they're seeing rulers all around them. So we can talk about how many do you want? 
Mommy, how many cups of soup do you want? One, two, three, or four. Oh, you want this number. What's that number? Seven. Oh, you want seven scoops. Here we go. One, ch, two, ch. So tying in all that. It's fun to let them be and do their own thing, but it's also fun as a grown-up to listen with your ears and hear what they're doing, what they're saying, what they're playing, and joining them too at play and letting them be in control. I brought out some different animals. It's always fun to make up some meals for your animals. I'm gonna move these guys over. Here's my cow from the farm, my sheep. Here's my pig, and they're so hungry. Well, let's get them their dishes. I can use these little lids and pretend. All right, they are so hungry. They're gonna have something delicious to eat. All right, which animal has the smallest dish? Which one's the smallest? Did you say the pig? Then you are right, let's feed the piggy. Here we go, piggy, I'm gonna give you a little scoop. It's hot, be careful, pig, okay? Here you go, Psh. Okay, make sure you blow. All right, which animal has the biggest dish, the biggest one? Did you say the cow? You are right, that's the biggest dish. Here goes the cow. All right, so you have fun with all your animals. And if you have an old doll, I have one here. Uh, unfortunately, her head popped off. All right, but you can get a doll, and now you have a customer for your restaurant, and you can feed your doll. Kids are so used to being fed, right, when they're little, so now they can be the ones to be the grown-up, and they can feed. Mmm. So again, don't let your child take the doll from their room. That was your doll when you were a child, and it's very special. But you can designate a toy doll to be in your bucket, right, inside your outdoor kitchen bucket. All right, stay there. The head rolled off. Oh, it's time to go, so you might need a doggy bag. Maybe they can put some ingredients inside a bag. Kids naturally love putting things in and out, and you know that because they'll come in their room, they'll find some toys, and they'll dump. Then they might put some things in, and they'll dump. They may open up a playhouse and put the toys in and close it. They may take a shape sorter and put all the shapes in. Kids love in and out play. That's a great two-year-old skill that kids are doing all the time. Now we're gonna take that skill and we're gonna add some purpose, some function to it. I even keep old cords around. Kids love playing with stuff, with stuff. So as they're grown up, you just need to make sure that they know it's the things in here. If they find something at home, well, they just have to ask you if it's okay to use, all right? And we're always encouraging positive, positive behavior and positive words and vocabulary. Outside, they may find some dirt. They may find some flowers, all right? You just have to give them the rules. This is where you may dig. This you may not dig, right? So there are some ideas for your outdoor kitchen. It's a bit of a disaster here, but that's part of having fun. All right, enjoy. Have fun in your kitchen and cooking up something yummy. I can't wait to see what you make. Send us a photo, all right? I want to see what it looks like.